Hello there, I'm Steve from Mac84, and welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be looking at some Game Boy games and their game saves. So, if you're familiar with the Nintendo Game Boy, well, it really needs no introduction. However, there were a lot of great games made for this system, and some of those games utilized a battery to save your progress. That's right, so some of these games, uh, if, especially if they're clear, you could tell right away, uh, or if they're popular titles that had game save functionality that was well known, like Pokemon, well, you know, you have this little battery here. And this battery, like all batteries, doesn't last forever. And what happens is, in order to save the progress on your game, it uses that battery to retain the information on the chip. And once the battery dies, the information is lost forever. There's no getting it back. So the problem is that if this battery is not replaced, you lose your save data. But also replacing this battery can be a little bit difficult because if you just open it up and take out the battery, well, you've lost the power flow to that chip and your data is gone. So I'm not gonna cover removing the battery or replacing it in this video. However, I'm gonna cover something that's really cool and that could save your game data if it's still on there. That's where this comes into play, the Mega Memory Card. This thing is pretty cool. I picked this up ages ago. This is actually the second or third one I've picked up because whenever I've seen them, I said, hey, this is a handy thing to have, I'm gonna buy it. And it came in very useful because when we were kids, me and my brothers had to share games and Pokemon was one of those games where you only had one save slot. So you couldn't really, you know, give it to your brother to play and, you know, have him save or something like that. He would save over the data or anything like that. So you didn't want that to happen. So what this device let you do is plug in a Game Boy game. So you could take the game out of your Game Boy and you plug it in to here, kind of like a Game Shark or an action replay Game Genie type pass through thing and put it through your Game Boy. And then there's a little menu system on this device and there's even a pass-through toggle. So you could actually play the game while it's on here if you really want to do that. Although uh, wiggling around this thing actually causes the game sometimes to freeze if you're doing that, so I wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, the whole purpose is that this thing can actually back up the save data from most popular games that used a battery to save the data. Not all of them, but most of them. And it was advertised as working for Pokemon games. I think that's why most people bought the thing. Now you may be saying, but wait, this has a battery to retain memory. Why is this thing any better? Well, it doesn't have a battery in there. The type of memory and the storage that is used does not require any battery to save it while it's off. So that's pretty cool. Now, the one thing I will advise you is that these things are old and anything old has its quirks. So don't expect to buy one of these and have it work perfectly. You might have to clean the contacts and stuff like that. But I'm gonna give you a quick demo of how this thing works. And we're gonna see if we could try and recover my original game save data from my Pokemon Red game because Last I checked, I think this still worked, and I don't think that I lost the save data on it. So I'm gonna open it up, we're gonna check the voltage to see if that battery still works. Now I know I backed the game up before, but I wanna do a fresh backup because I don't know if I've made any progress since the last time I backed this up. So let's get right to it. Before we continue, I wanna note that this mega memory card has a switch on the top. There's the memory manager mode, which is when the switch is to the right, and then there's the pass-through mode, which allows you to play the game as normally, and that's when the switch is to the left. So if we switch it to the right and we turn the system on, we are greeted to the mega memory card menu, and you could back up, restore, erase, and do all sorts of things. This is how you manage the data that is stored. And as you can see, we can't really do much of anything because it doesn't detect a cartridge plugged into the back of it. Now, I will note that this screen on this Game Boy does have some streaking issues. This is something I'm gonna fix in another video, but uh, essentially it's not a big problem. And for today, we could ignore it. So let's plug in our Pokemon game here. This is the one we wanna back up. All right. Let's try and just go to the pass-through mode to see if it's a problem with the cartridge which it seems to be, huh. All right, let's clean some stuff here. Well, if you've ever watched a John Riggs video, you know that cleaning these games isn't too difficult. You can take a game bit screwdriver, I have the bit here, and you just need to unscrew the back of the cartridge, like so, and sometimes these screws get stuck in there just a little bit. There we go. And the bottom slides down, and then you have the board beneath it. Now, this is the battery that we will have to be careful of. We do not want to mess with that. Uh, actually, before we continue, let's see if that battery still has any juice on it. 
So I'm just going to take my multimeter here and measure the voltage of the battery to see if it's dead or if it still has any charge in it. The negative spot of the battery is here. The positive is over here. So we're just going to really test this quickly. Negative, positive. My goodness, we still have three volts. Not bad for a battery that was installed in 1998. That's an old battery. All right, so let's see why it's not booting. Let's try and take a look to see if it needs to be cleaned up. So I did some cleaning with just a cotton swab and some isopropyl alcohol, and that did not seem to resolve the issue. We're still getting that weird dot matrix style pattern on the display when we turn the game on. So let's take a look at this game with a closer view on my microscope to see if anything is amiss. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at this and just see how these contacts are. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> they've definitely been well loved, now there is some exposed copper here, but it does not look like there's a break. We could test that with our multimeter in a moment. And the same here, although again, it's not like there's a broken path here. It looks like it continues, but we could test that. Again, this cartridge is quite old, so it could very well be that this thing is just a little bit picky. Uh, we will be checking the solder joints here to make sure um, all the joints to these chips are still in good shape. Just taking a little bit of a view around the board here. Oh, we have a little solder ball here, probably from the factory. Get that out of the way. And see if there's anything else. Another little tiny baby solder ball. Get that out of the way. Yeah, so everything looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any leakage from the battery, which is right over here. So as you can see, this is a CR2025 battery and that has a date of September 1998 on it. So there you go. And that might be the expiration date or the manufacture date, not sure which, but anyway, it's quite old. And yeah, it looks like uh, some of these legs could use some touch up, I guess. Uh, we'll poke them in a moment, but let's test some continuity on these contacts and see if we have any issues. So I'm just putting my multimeter into continuity mode and that will beep to tell us if one path leads to the other. So if I do this, you can see there's this one conductive piece of metal and it's saying, yes, that path is complete and it's happy. So that looks okay. That looks okay. That looks okay. Now I could follow these traces up to where they go elsewhere in the board, but I'm not really seeing a problem there. So I don't think that would be necessary. So I'm just seeing if the short wire path here is okay, which that seems to be the case. And yeah, that seems to be fine. So I don't think that's the problem. So let's continue looking on to see if we could find anything else. Um, actually, oh, look at that. Look at that. There we go. That would cause a problem. Ooh, some of these legs are not mounted. Some of these legs are just simply not touching that solder anymore. So, you know, after all these years, I guess some of them have gotten loose. Yeah, there's another one. That would definitely cause the game not to play correctly. My goodness, let's touch this up and see if we get this going again. That would be exciting. Yeah, that's a bit wiggly. And the one next to it, oh, the one there is okay. But let's go through all of these. Just give it a slight nudge with our scalpel just to see if there's anything that we have to reflow other than those few pins. And this is just something that happens with old solder. It could break down. The contacts can uh, get a bit worn. There's another one that's loose. And let's check on this chip as well. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah, at least uh, half a dozen of these so far are a bit wiggly. Yep. Look at that. And uh, this clear stuff here is just the old flux. And uh, let's see if any of these are problematic. Yeah. Okay, so it's worth reflowing those. Let's just check this chip here. Make sure that doesn't have anything here. And who knows if the save data is still on here because some of those pins have come loose, but hopefully, hopefully it is. If not, we do have a fairly recent backup from when I was actively playing this game. So it's not the end of the world, but it would be nice to get a fresh copy of it. Okay, so what we have to do is turn on the soldering iron and reflow those areas on this board. So what I'm gonna use here is some flux 
and then we have some leaded solder and that's just going to help us tidy up those spots where the contacts of the chip are no longer contacting to the board. We're going to use our soldering iron here. Some of the links to this stuff are in the video description, but this is just what I use. You could use similar tools without too much worry. So I'm just going to put a healthy dose of flux on this chip. Yeah, it's probably too much, but that's okay. We don't really have to worry too much. Flux is not going to harm this thing, and uh, we might as well tidy up as many of these pads as we can to avoid this issue reoccurring in the future. So I'm just going to go ahead on these two large chips and put a healthy amount of flux there. And uh, I'm just gonna put some fresh solder on the end of my soldering iron here. And we're gonna carefully touch up these joints here. Now you don't need too much solder on your tip, nor do you have to push the soldering iron against these contacts for too long. We just want to freshen them up. They are already over where they have to be. So we don't have to be too, too concerned about our cleaning up here and we can always test our work with our multimeter. And some people will say, well, your solder already has some flux in it depending on what you buy. And that's all well and good, but I tend to put a little more flux on there just because it makes everything a little bit easier. It's magic, so why not use it? And obviously, if you are new to soldering, I would suggest not to try out your soldering skills on your prized Game Boy cartridge or your vintage computer or whatever you're doing. You want to start with something that's expendable. A broken VCR, an old TV satellite box, or something like that. Or you can go ahead and purchase, for only a few dollars, some of these surface mount soldering kits or soldering tutorial kits on places like Amazon and the like. With those, you'll be able to test your skills without damaging anything or risking hurting your prized possessions. And that is exactly what you should do because a lot of this old stuff is very, very cranky and the pads where these pins touch can be very old and fragile. So you wanna make sure your skills are a little bit more advanced before you dive into this sort of stuff. Now this flux isn't going to hurt anything, but I do have this little cotton swab with 99% isopropyl alcohol on it. And so we're just going to go ahead and clean up some of these areas just to make it look a bit tidy. Okay, so it looks like these joints are in much better shape. So let's test this out. All right, so now we just want to assemble our cartridge so we could test our game. Again, the colors are mismatched on this, but it doesn't really matter. We're just using this to test things out. All right, so let's put it into our Game Boy and see if we get a different result. Okay, well, we're better off than we were before. Let's just try reseeding it a few times. Hey, there we go. Hey, look, it's booting the game. All right, so the real test is going to be if the save data is still on here. And I'm not sure of that, but uh, we're going to bet to find out. Nah, it has uh, since been erased. Well, that's probably because maybe one of those chips was actually storing the data. And yeah, I mean, the battery was still working, but unfortunately... The chips were not making a contact, so that data was lost, but that's okay. We have a backup, and that is exactly why I got this device ages ago. So let's plug in our game, and we'll see how this works. So I have the game plugged into the back of this unit. We have the mega memory card switched into the memory manager mode, and we can back up and restore things. So let's go to restore. And let's see. Oh, I actually don't have Pokemon Red on here. So I have a few of these units. Um, I'll have to grab the other one, which actually has the Pokemon Red save. All right. So I should have my second one in here. Yep. Right beneath the e-readers. 
Here we go. Yeah, so here's here's my Pokemon uh, Red save that's on this Mega Memory card. So yeah, I do have two of them. I, I saw this one at a good price. Could not say no because I was so happy with this one that I got in my youth. So excellent. Okay, so we put our Pokemon Red game into our other Mega Memory card. Let's see if we have a file on here to restore to that cartridge. Sorry about the angle here, but it's always uh, a little difficult to get this just perfect. Okay, so let's go to restore. Excellent, so we have uh, a bunch of stuff here. So it looks like I backed up a few things. I have my red game here that has 100%, so I think that's when I, I beat the Elite Four and all that stuff in Pokemon. So let's select this, and it says it's working. Okay, so now we're gonna turn the system off. I'm gonna switch the toggle here, or we could just uh, reinsert the red game, but uh, let's keep the Mega Memory Card attached and try and boot the Pokemon Red and see if it has our game save in there. There we go, continue. There it is, player red, 151 Pokemon, time played, 89 hours, probably a bit more than that, but oh my goodness, this takes me back. Who did I have in my party? Oh, of course, we have Fish, which is, you know, the best Pokemon. I believe that's my Gyarados. <laughs> yeah, and you have to get this screen fixed. That'll be in another video, I'm sure. We have a Dodrio, we have a Lectabuzz, uh, Chansey, well, can't surf in there. My uh, Dragonite. And good old Moltres. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm going to be playing this for hours now. Now, although this cartridge is working again, we do not want to leave that battery in there. That battery is old, and it's probably not going to stick around for much longer. So you can replace the batteries. Of course, the caveat there is when you're removing the battery, you're going to risk deleting that saved data unless you're powering the chip from an external source. So I'm sure there are plenty of videos about that on how to do that, but we're not going to be covering that here today. Now, when I was in Japan in 2015, I did pick up these Pokemon games for the Game Boy Color, and they were about, yeah, 350 yen. So these are about uh, 3 $4, something like that, with the whatever the exchange rate was at the time. But uh, I don't know if any of these actually have game saves on them. I think they were wiped, uh, but let's see. So here's Pokemon Silver. This is, of course, the Japanese version. All right, so that's new game. So there's no, there's no game save in this one. The battery might have died, or the store that had these might have erased the game. Who knows? Let's try Pokemon Gold. Same thing. Yeah, because if you select this, it's going to go through the whole startup. Yeah, so we're going to turn that off. Uh, but I am curious about Pokemon Crystal. So let's see if we can get this working on another system. All right, so we have a Game Boy Color here. Of course, it's also green. And let's see if this game has any save data on it. Nope. <laughs> Okay, so that just goes to show you, if you want to preserve your old game data, you have to copy it off, whether you're using a modern device or something like one of these, because once it's gone, it's gone. There's no getting it back. Now, this procedure will also work with the Game Boy Camera. It's actually one of the ways that I found out to transfer the data from the Game Boy Camera directly to something else, other than using a, a Super Game Boy or something like that, where you're displaying the images through a video signal. No, through a convoluted series of steps, you can actually back up the data from the Game Boy Camera to the Mega Memory Card, and then using a third-party uh, blank Game Boy cartridge. You could actually dump the data from the Mega Memory Card to that blank cartridge, plug it into your computer, download the data that way, and then convert it and get the images out of it. Now, that might be a little convoluted for most people, but you can do it. 
this Game Boy camera I picked up in Japan while thrifting. So there's nothing really vital on here that I need to back up, although I probably will in the future. But just to be aware, there are some physical limitations preventing you from getting a clean connection here. And you could really have some trial and error if you're trying to plug these things in. That's, you know, anything larger than your standard Game Boy game. So now that we have our game working again and the data has been restored, there's only one thing left to do. That's to play it. Oh, and I guess uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you could do that as well. And you could support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Mac 84. You get bonus stuff and behind the scenes things you can't get anywhere else. But uh, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you right here next time on Mac 84.